I, like I wouldn't be sat here talking about my business if it wasn't for my mum and dad. Um, I like owe them everything, even just from how they brought me up and onto like helping me get me on my feet with the business. Um, I was brought up. If I wanted five pound, I had to cut the grass and wash the car, and like, nothing was ever free. So I think they've sort of drilled that into me from from little, really. It's obviously worked because they, all the family are quite successful in their own businesses now, aren't they? Tell us about some of your other family members. Uh, yeah, uh, my sister's uh, currently smashing it. She's got three uh, beauty salons, and uh, I never thought Daniela, she, like I never thought she'd be she'd be able to do that. Not saying that I was doubting her. <laughs> She's but not she, listening. She, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she she runs the salon, she does the bookkeeping, she does the stock orders, and she's like, she amazes me. Uh, I struggle to look after just me. I'm on my own, and she's got three salons, so, yeah, I mean, I've got a lot to learn from her, to be fair. How d- how did you find that side of things? Because there is the sort of administrative side of it as well, because being a creative, I yep. think that's quite difficult, isn't it, to manage both those? I I think I was put on this earth to draw pictures and make pretty videos. I am rubbish <laughs> with numbers. I'm terrible with with bookkeeping, and I just I think cause I don't enjoy it. I put it off, and then I end up having to spend a few days catching up. But I'm not good at it. Yeah. Now you do do. I mean, you mentioned obviously part of the reason why you want to set up your business was so you could spend a bit more time here and sort of work out the the work life balance, work family mm-hmm. life balance, I suppose. But you do still do some travelling, and I want to ask you about something you did earlier this year because yes. I thought it was exceptional. You do, you tell us about the Dakar Rally. Oh, uh, the Dakar Rally is um, it's an annual event. Um, it changes each year the route, but this year was um, Peru, Bolivia, and then finishing in Argentina, and it's over. I think 17 or 16 days. Um, so I think it was a, a week before Christmas. I'm sat there just finally getting on top of my workload, ready to relax. And then my phone rings and um, someone's put my name forward. And I've got a bike rider on the phone called Lyndon Poskett. And he's t- telling me about how uh, he's going to Dakar and he wants to make daily videos. So one minute I wasn't going to do anything in the new year next minute I'm in South America for the whole of January so but it was quite a, a thing that you did because no one's ever taken that approach to, to covering the Dakar rally before have they yeah this was um so when I was speaking to Lyndon he was explaining the whole project um he was saying that he's bought the rights and he's got permission to film almost like behind the scenes content so when you watch the tv programs you see helicopter footages of bikes and cars racing through deserts and stuff but which is which is brilliant but you never see the camps you never see the canteen the shower setups like the whole kind of lifestyle of the rally you never see that so we've gone and covered that and the feedback was really about how no one had seen that side of the the event before and I think people just really enjoyed it so he says that people really enjoyed it tell us what kind of views your videos have had I can't believe it, to be honest, but between um, Facebook and YouTube, there's about around 4 million views. 